The following podcast contains spoilers for Giant. You have been warned. What did you say? You say? You say? You say? I said the following podcast contains spoilers for Giant. You have been warned. What's up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of KFR News Radio. This is your host, Glenjamin Button, <laughs> along with it. your host, Miguel Magusto. I said you it right said this it right time. This time. I said yeah. it punctually and correctly yes. for my own sanity. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Last week, I was like, how am I, why am I doing this? Editing, <laughs> I was like, Glenn, why do you keep doing this? And yes. then I, obviously, I couldn't talk back to myself at that point. But, Mike, how are you doing? I am doing a okay. How are you doing? Hey, I feel that. I'm doing B-okay. Be positive. That's B- what I always tell yes, myself. Yes. Jesus, help. O negative. <sighs> is that your blood type? I have no idea what my blood type is. Same here, actually. I should probably yeah. know that. Probably. Anyway. <laughs> Listen, we had a busy, really, really busy week of movies. We, we did. W- we both watched a lot. Yes. And... I'll just get started. I'll be honest. Okay, I go just want to. I want a rapid fire. So I watched Eternals with you, and then I watched Giant. That was it. Oh, you were being facetious. I okay, w- I was. <laughs> I told a little lie. I saw. Uh, I saw about a movie a day. This, Holy shit! This week, so uh, <laughs> I actually I'm, didn't I'm see con- that. Continuing that tonight. Uh, so the first movie I watched since the last podcast was Blinded by the Light, mm-hmm. which is a British movie about this Pakistani kid. Uh, he's he's a British kid, but of Pakistani heritage, um, and uh, just kind of dealing with racism in the 80s, and he finds uh, Bruce Springsteen and becomes obsessed with Bruce Springsteen to the point where he's cringily quoting Bruce Springsteen lyrics to everyone around him for every little thing. Mm-hmm. And, you know, until I watched this movie, I didn't think that Bruce Springsteen fandom was a cult, but I do now. Uh, I'm worried <laughs> for everyone that is obsessed with Bruce Springsteen. Yeah, protect yourself. Uh, you know, it, it, I should have known because everyone calls him the boss. That is weird. When you put someone on such a pedestal, it's it's automatically a bad situation for a cult. So, uh, mm-hmm. yes, uh, Bruce Springsteen fans, if you are in a cult and don't want to be in a cult, blink three times. And oh, shit, we can't see you. All oh right. shit! Uh, Screech really loudly. Listen but to very this episode a hundred times. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, but it, it was a it was a cringy movie. Like I liked the premise and everything. It was just done in a very cringy way. Mm-hmm. Uh, with it was it was like teen teen angst, where there it was like dancing, kind of like footloose in a bit with Bruce Springsteen lyrics being projected onto the wall behind him, and it was just. Ugh. Oof. It was just bad. I didn't care for it. Uh, then uh, I am. I have started to go through the one thousand and one movies you must watch before you die, which is really one thousand two hundred forty-five movies you must watch before you die, and will continue to grow from there as more movies are released. Of course, uh, I'm eventually going to do a series on that, which will probably take me ten years, assuming I don't die before then. Um, you better not. You're immortal, aren't you? Uh, I wish. Uh, but the first one I watched for that series uh, is one. I, I have like a random number generator just so I don't like pick all the ones that I've yeah. heard of first. Uh, and the first one that came up was one that I had not heard of, and it's called Red Sorghum, oh. uh, which is a Chinese film uh, about this um, woman who is forced into a marriage with a leper, but then the leper dies like right away. Because he's a leper, yeah. <laughs> in in uh, I think the early 1900s, and uh, so she inherits his sorghum wine winery. Uh, sorghum's like a type of plant that they can make wine out of, I guess. And uh, it's just kind of about her falling in love with this guy, and it's it's a very like subtle story. It's just like it's more about the culture of that life and and china and and whatnot than it is like an actual like story Mm. um so i really enjoyed it It, it's actually directed it's the first film made by the same director of hero 
Oh. Uh, I'm going to get his name real quick. Just bear with me. Mm-hmm. Uh, Zhang Yumu or Yumao. Um, yeah, he directed Hero. It's his. This is his first film. Really enjoyed it. Uh, yeah, suggest awesome. people check it out if you are into that kind of thing. Uh, then I watched Dune again with Papa Hicks because Papa, Papa Hicks, Hicks is a ma- massive Dune fan. And so, yeah, I saw it mainly just for him to, to see it. Um, mm. And he loved it. He loved it. Uh, he said, I hope they make the other ones before I die. Uh, classic. <laughs> I, I <hope> so too. <laughs> classic Papa Hicks morbidity. Uh, is it morbid, morbidity? Morbidity? Morbidity, bobbidity, yeah. boo. You know what I'm saying. He's, he's a morbid person in, in like a humorous way. Um, but yeah, I, I hope they make those other ones before he dies as well. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I see but, it carried over. Yeah, I if, for, if more than anything, I was just glad that he liked it. I enjoyed it more the second time, probably. Yeah. Uh, not enough to bump it back up to a four. Um, but I think overall, I'll like the entire series once it's done. But my dad liked it, and that's all that matters. Then I watched Eternals. We have a video of that on the YouTube, so you can check that out. Uh, then I watched the second movie that was selected for the 1001 Movies You Must Watch Before You Die, and it is the 1938 The Adventures of Robin Hood Ooh. with uh, Errol Flynn um, and uh, Basil Rathbone, who is in Court Jester, which is a parody of Robin Hood. Uh, so I thought that was pretty fun. Uh, this legitimately was a, a solid, you know, f- action film for, for the 30s. Mm-hmm. Um, I... I th- thought it was it kept you interested it definitely has like the 30s style acting which could kind of be hokey a bit yeah uh but overall solid film uh then i watched giant which we're going to get into in this episode and then last night i watched spencer which is about princess diana um towards the end of her marriage i believe with uh the prince of wales charles Mm -hmm. prince charles uh, it's directed by Pablo Lorraine, who uh, directed another film that I saw called Jackie, which is about Jackie Kennedy with Natalie Portman. Uh, this is with Kristen Stewart as Princess Diana. It's got a bunch of other people. Sean Harris is in there. Uh, Timothy Spall, Sally Hawkins, or Hawkins, uh, Thomas Douglas, a bunch of people that you'll probably recognize. Uh, Kirsten, uh, Kirsten, Kristen Stewart did a really good job. My only complaint is that she kind of sounds like she's whispering the whole time. I feel like um, that's normally her trope as well, sadly. Yeah, Princess Diana was definitely soft-spoken, but she still had, like, some oomph in her voice. Yeah. Uh, whereas this, she kind of, like, said everything like it was a secret. I just, I, 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 I don't know. Yeah, even, <laughs> even, even when she was, like, yelling, it was weird. Yeah. Um, so like it wasn't a bad performance, but that was definitely distracting and I would forget about it every now and then, but then it would come back. Uh, but yeah, you know, I don't give a shit about the Royal family. I I think we had a war (laughs) about that or something. So I don't understand why so many Americans are obsessed with it. I know Princess Diana. Yeah. Princess Diana was like the princess of the people and everything. And what happened to her is tragic, but I really don't understand why so many Americans are obsessed with, uh, the Royal family. Who knows? Um, and so, yeah, if you like the royal family, you'll probably like this more than me. But even mm-hmm. as someone who doesn't give a shit. And if you like whispering, you'll probably enjoy yeah. this movie a lot. I thought it was solid. I thought it was a, a great study of her character and especially all the shit she went through and how horrible the royal family is. And honestly, England should just get rid of the monarchy. But mm. I'm sure many people will disagree with me. And honestly, if they're English, their opinion on that matters more than mine. True. Uh, so, yeah, that is all I watched this week. Uh, I don't have any news. Do you have any news? Uh, I got a, I got a little bit of news. It was okay, nothing okay, crazy. Okay, okay, okay. Um, as as we talked about uh, very recently, probably about two months ago, maybe at this point, I recently watched the Robert De Niro film Midnight Run with Charles yes. Grodin. Yeah. Apparently, they're doing a second one, and De Niro is actually hopping on that as a producer, and apparently, it's starring Regina, uh, starring Regina Hall. Okay. Um, now. Not sure how it's going to tie into the original at all, but, but I mean, if yeah, if there's different characters, like yeah, th- that's a soft reboot. That's not a second one. <laughs> yeah, that's. Uh, I mean, De Niro's producing it, so I mean, he, at least they've got that going for it. Uh, yeah. How how this is going to go though, especially with Groden uh, sadly passed away. Unfortunately, what they're going to uh, go for here. But hey, I thought it was a little piece of interesting news that I saw there, especially since I just saw the movie very recently and yeah. enjoyed it a lot. 
Um, so yeah, that was that was my little piece of news. And yeah. but just like that, we can move yeah. on. Well, before we move on from that, uh, if there is ever a movie that has a remake, mm-hmm. do yourself a favor and just watch the original first anyway. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I admit I don't always do that, and it's usually when I don't know that there's a remake or that it is a remake. But uh, like they're remaking the uh, Train to Busan, the South Korean uh, yeah. zombie thriller. Why? Just watch the Korean version. Yeah, it's just, fantastic. But like, why are they doing that? Because they want they want the dumb people who are like, "This is America. You gotta speak American," even though that was shot in Korea. Subtitles. <laughs> I can't read subtitles and see what's going on at the same time. Uh, my brain um, and eyes don't <laughs> work like such. Uh, but I, I, yeah, just check it out. Check out uh, Midnight Run as well. It's a great movie. Mm-hmm. Just watch it, and then just watch, watch this it. remake or sequel that's coming out. Uh, but yeah, let's get into Handia or The Giant or just Giant. There's a bunch of titles. A story about the world's tallest man. This is an unsettling Basque language period drama focused on sibling rivalry. Directed by Ador Oregi and John Gariano. Uh, written by Ador Oregi and John Gariano and Jose Marie Goegnaga. I always pick the ones that are hard to pronounce. Uh, it is starring Joseba Usabiaga and Neko Sargadoy, Inigo Aranburu, and Ramon Aguirre. Uh, uh, yeah, I've read enough. To, I've embarrassed myself <laughs> enough. Uh, but yeah, I, I picked this movie because, you know, the it came up when I was uh, doing a horror filter for for roulette. Strictly so I could like see what horror movies are on streaming things. Mm -hmm. Um, And this is not a horror movie at all. Not in the slightest. (laughs) So I don't know why it was on there. (laughs) Uh, But yeah, it's a, well, it's a based on a true story uh, about a uh, 19th century man uh, who was a, you know, the son of a farmer and he is really tall Mm -hmm. and it just kind of going through the struggles of that gigantism. Um, uh, I think for right off the bat, the biggest thing to notice about this is it's got gorgeous cinematography. It does. Um, I mean, the landscapes that they shoot in help for sure. But, you know, the lighting on the interior scenes, the, the shot choices they have, uh, it, it's just a beautiful film to watch all, uh, all together. Um, and, uh, it definitely, you know, helps with a foreign film. When mm-hmm. it's, uh, you know, I, I like foreign films, but I know a lot of people who don't because they don't like reading subtitles. Yeah, uh, I mean, which you're, is, already, again, you're already looking down at these words. So then at that point, you're kind of just quickly looking around at everything else at the same yeah. time. So it did really help the fact that you're you're reading these words and then you bounce your eyes up and see like this beautiful scenery or stuff yeah, like that. It, it makes it worth it. And yeah. uh, for, for those who don't necessarily go for that all the time, uh, the cinematographer, uh, let's see, what was his name? Uh, Javier Aguirre, he, um, let me, did, did he do anything that I've seen? No, he didn't. So I don't know where I'm going with that, but he did a great job. <laughs> <laughs> he did a great job. Bad and he did. It's a beautiful film. Uh, the, the, um, the actor who played, uh, Joaquin, uh, who is the, the man with giantism, uh, Ineko Sar, uh, Sagardor, he is not, in fact, a giant. He doesn't have giantism and they actually, achieve that effect by having like the shots where his face isn't seen or like far away shots with a uh, uh, former basketball player named Sai Kashi I believe is how you hmm. pronounce it 
Uh, but I, I thought it was really effective in in how they did that. Um, yeah, I mean, it really it looked great considering, yeah. like, in one of the beginning shots where you have uh, him and his brother uh, Martin uh, next to each other. You're like, all right, they're the same size, and then like 30 minutes later, next thing you know, a homie's eight feet tall at least. Yeah, when Martin comes back from war, his his younger brother had grown significantly, mm-hmm. um, and it, it's it's a really intriguing study of you know especially for back then where you know you didn't have the internet to see all these things to just know how it was first of all making money off of just being tall that's a ridiculous concept today yeah um because you at the very least you have to be able to play basketball now anybody in the (laughs) nba would just be like making loads of cash yeah without without having having to actually play (laughs) yeah uh but i i thought it was you know it was a cool study in the negatives of it too you know obviously there's the health negatives of of his his bones hurting and Mm -hmm. it is a terminal disease that is not is incurable uh you know you can live a happy happy life but you eventually will grow too much for your body to handle and uh just the the psychology or psycho uh, yeah psychology of that um that fact and him kind of learning that in real time uh, along with the sibling rivalry between him and Martin, I think it was just a great story all around. Mm-hmm. It's very true. Um, I di- I want to talk about one of the like the war that was going on and that what Mar- Martin had to go into and mm-hmm. how well that was shot out and everything like that and how yeah. gruesome it was just for like a five minute thing. I was like, holy shit, this is insane. Like, they're going hard murdering people. (laughs) (laughs) It's like a small budget saving Private Ryan for a hot second there with just 18, like 1840 or whatever that took place. I can't remember the exact time, but Mm -hmm. it was pretty nutty. Like, uh, holy shit, just blood everywhere. And then poor Martin in his arm. I was not ready for that. I want that man's arm back for him. For real. Um, yeah, that was one of, uh, several, uh, <laughs> civil wars that Spain has had. Mm-hmm. You know, I think this was in the 1800s, so that one was probably the, f- I'm, I'm, ju- I'm looking at Wikipedia right now, mm. just going off by when they lived, those two characters, this was either the first Carlist War or the second Carlist War, um, oh, as- Second Carlos work is Basque uh, Basque country, which is where there it, it is. takes place. Um, no, first, sorry, it was lined there up. With, that's, <laughs> that's the first Carlos war. Sorry, the the lines were weird on that. Um, but you're absolutely right. It was very impressive for just how like how small of a segment it was. Yeah, uh, that it went through all that, and it's you know to see them put so much care into like Martin's backstory. Uh, really kind of painted his mindset throughout, especially, you know, becoming um, uh, paralyzed, his le- his right arm paralyzed, I believe it was, uh, and just learning of uh, Joaquin falling in love with the girl that he was in love with while he was away um, really kind of s- laid the foundation for the sibling rivalry to begin. Mm-hmm. Uh, and... Yeah, I, I, it's remarkable storytelling, in my opinion. Just really, really impressive. Did not expect that from a movie that, uh, if it weren't for streaming roulette, I would have never heard of. It, it, it is great storytelling. Like, specifically, I, I know we said sibling rivalry about, like, 18 times now. But, uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, it just it was really good. Especially it did handle all the stuff with Martin well. And then you went to, when he came back... And then you had to deal with both the brothers and how hard it, everything was for, you know, Joaquin and, like, what he had to go through and how people had to, like, look up at him and just laugh at him and just be amazed with him or be disgusted by him and how he took all of that. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, t- just being a tall man isn't easy. You got to bend that back over just to look out a window at all times. It's, just to it's, get out through a door. It's pretty crazy. And I can't even imagine just not being treated as a person yeah. Just because you're tall, I, I mean that goes for all types of like people and how they look or how they, you know, just are. And of course, like this movie handled it so well mm-hmm. by this guy just being really fucking tall. I mean, and, the, he was really just seen as like a personal science experiment to the point mm-hmm. where they see the Spanish queen, she's just like 
are you well proportioned? Take off your pants. Mm -hmm. But like, didn't want anything to do with it. Was just curious, and he had to oblige because she was the queen. Like, that's super fucked up. Mm -hmm. Um, but it 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 kind of reminded me in a bit. I don't know if you felt the same way. Uh, the whole uh, side uh, sideshow traveling thing um, aspect of it kind of reminded me of the third story in the Ballad of Buster Scruggs with Liam Neeson and uh, I think it's Barry Medling. Is that who it is? Yeah. Um, it it, it kind of reminded me of that and that like the just struggling, kind of shilling yourself out for. Barely a, I mean, well, they, they make a decent living at first, but at the end is like barely enough to live. Mm-hmm. Um, especially after they get robbed. They're just like. Especially after they get robbed, which forces. They're pinching you know, again. Yeah. And in the end, when uh, they, they hint at this in the beginning where someone stole his bones. Mm-hmm. Um, and at the end, they kind of explain that he might have sold his bones to science uh, to pay back uh, Martin. Um I personally think that's probably the more plausible. I think that's exactly what happened. That's exactly <laughs> because there's the money that showed up out of nowhere. Yep. Uh, and and then his his body goes missing, and he made it very clear before any of that happened that that is not what he wanted. He wanted to be buried mm-hmm. in in also, and, and it it just was a really heartbreaking story of, you know, there. <laughs> gonna say it again their sibling rivalry mm-hmm. kind of bringing out the worst in both of them and it wasn't until towards the end of uh joaquin's life that they really kind of saw each other as equals and and brothers again and it, it's heartbreaking but it, it, it was you know very compelling story it was um, i think it had a lot of humorous aspects as well um you know when they're first hiding joaquin uh, and he's dressed in that soldier garb. <laughs> he's just mm-hmm. like looking in the mirror with the rifle, like playing soldier. Yeah. It, it yeah. really kind of shows like he's really not that old. Like, yeah, he's in his twenties, but mm-hmm. he's still a child at heart. Just, and yeah, just a giant child. Yeah, they they had little moments like that that were uh, were well timed to kind of break up the bleakness of the rest of it because it's a relatively bleak movie. It is. It is. Yeah. Um. I'll be. I don't know how much more there really is to talk about. I mean, it's it's a pretty thorough, straightforward movie as far yeah. as it goes, and it's it's hard to talk about, you know, what really there is besides what <laughs> sibling rivalry and such. <laughs> um, but I think I think we really hit all the main points. Honestly, yeah. uh, the last thing I will say: Can you imagine how boring life of it must have been back then that you would be willing and excited to spend money just to see a really tall dude? Dude, uh, yeah, I can, <laughs> like, I can imagine, especially if you're like a farmer, though. Like, I, I guess I can understand it. Like, you don't really see, s- yeah, something yeah, but like, like that. They, he, they have people in the city like lining up. Yeah, yeah, it's like, true. It's it's crazy. It, it's, <laughs> but I mean, I guess newspapers, uh, newspapers were obviously the biggest thing at that time. And from what we saw yeah. in the movie, like, they weren't that big of newspapers either, though. So like, mm-hmm. it's not like you see these things even in the newspapers all that often because. I'm sure that was kind of like a commodity at a certain point, like to mm. have. Yeah. I don't know. I will say there, there, there's one point where I really felt connected to Joaquin is when he's sitting down with that other really tall lady and he's just trying to rip her corset off. And I've never compared to a person as much as I did as him in that moment because he <laughs> couldn't get that son of a bitch off. And I felt that. I'm like, I'm sorry, buddy. I know I've been through it too. Well, he also is uh, I- impotent, so. And so am I. <laughs> <laughs> the the note I wrote for that is poor Joaquin's little Joaquin. Um, <laughs> exactly, man. It, what a poor guy. <laughs> uh, um, but uh, I feel like I had. Oh, it, it was also really touching just seeing him meet other people with giantism. Mm-hmm. Uh, like the first guy he meets, I believe, is the guy's name is Saeed or something. Yeah, yeah. Or Saad. Uh, just, you know. The look on his face to realize that he's not alone, uh, even though there's few of them, but he's not the only one in the world like that was just very touching. Especially um, when they they all met up like that huge group of them. That was that was yeah really at Stonehenge. Cool. Yeah, yeah, that was really cool. Uh, but yeah, I thought it was a really beautiful film. Uh, don't have anything else to say about it though. Same, same. Here. All right, so that brings us to the judgment for Giant. Does it make it onto the KFR movie shelf with the likes of Apostle and Handmaiden? Uh, since I picked it, that means I go first. I, honestly, 
struggling to decide. Um, mm. I really liked it. I, I liked this movie. Uh, I I wasn't wowed by it, but it was a it was a touching film. Yeah. Um. So I really want to hear what your thoughts are before <laughs> I decide, because honestly, <laughs> my thoughts are pretty much yours, right on the nose. Actually, yeah. <laughs> I uh, mean, either honestly, either way, it could go either or. Yeah. Um, this, like I think it, it wasn't a movie that is above and beyond crazy good, but yeah. it was a very touching story, and honestly, I wasn't bored by it in the slightest. Yeah. But again, I wasn't completely wowed by it either. Yeah, I think for that, because we're both unsure, that's probably a sign that we should, you know, probably not put it on the shelf. It's a solid film. I do suggest people check it out. You know, I, I cannot em- emphasize enough that people need to watch more foreign films because mm-hmm. there are some great films being made overseas. Uh, and uh, yeah, so, but this time around, I don't think this one goes on the shelf, but it's still a really solid film. It really is. Yeah. So. The Giant does not make it onto the KFR movie shelf with the likes of Apostle and Handmaiden. It doesn't become a little shelf boy. Hmm. Its pants are not hiked up high, but it's not in the trash. It's it's close. We're just going to leave it on streaming because it's on Netflix right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, yeah, that brings us to our plugs for this week. My plug for this week, I definitely did not just find it 30 seconds before you got <laughs> on. Um <laughs> I have a list of four other plugs, but they're all plugs that I'm not crazy about, and I just want them there yeah. for if I can't find one at all. Uh, but this one, I, I only watched a little bit of it, but it seems like an intriguing video that I'm going to finish on Cinefix, uh, IGN Movies and TV channel on YouTube, the 10 best movie endings of all time, a Cinefix, Cinefix movie list. Uh, I wish yeah. IGN never really got directly involved with them so that it wasn't all of that wording. <laughs> yeah, for real. Uh, but I'm, I'm glad they got the bag at least. Though, yeah, you know? <laughs> I mean, Cin- Cinefix isn't a great name to begin with. It's it's clunky. Uh, yeah. But yeah, this kind of goes over the, uh, as it promises, the 10 best movie endings of all time. And it also looks like they have a shit ton of honorable mentions. Uh, I have I haven't watched the whole thing, but... Is yeah. that did that recently come out? I feel like I might have seen that already. It came out on April thirtieth of this year. Oh, I did um, not see it. Yeah, so it's got movies like uh, Psycho, Abrupt, Sad, mm-hmm. Happy. Oh no, sorry, sorry. Sad was the category. Cinema to Paradiso for Happy, uh, Dancer in the Dark, Sword of Doom. I'm not going to go through the whole list. Yeah, um, otherwise they can't watch it. Otherwise, there's no point in you watching it. But yeah, it's an interesting list from what I've seen so far. I'm excited to watch the rest of it. And that is the 10 best movie endings of all time. A Cinefix, Cinefix movie list. See, mm-hmm. that's why it's not good. Cinefix sounds C- better. Cinefix. But, uh, <laughs> on the Cinefix IGN Movies and TV YouTube channel. They say there are two parts to any movie. The ending and everything else. Well, we just did beginnings and today we're not interested in everything else. So these are our picks for the 10 best movie endings of all time. Yes, I, I do also recommend that. It's, it's very good channel. I love it. So mm-hmm. watch watch what he said. Yes. You. Um, for me, however, uh, I know you did just kind of recommend this uh, a couple couple weeks ago, specifically, I think, for Halloween. Um, I just started actually getting into the movies that made us on Netflix. Love that and show. Just, I, I, was, I was at my mom's on Friday. You know, it was like fucking midnight 30 and i was like I, i'm not tired enough to go to bed i want to put something on and i put uh the the first episode on and it was it was amazing first was like, ever episode of first yeah the first season. first episode period and which what movie was that i forget honestly i wish i could tell you <laughs> you forget if, uh yeah i do and it of course it's not in fucking order or was it season two that I started watching? They don't have these in order on IMDb. They don't. I, well, it's not really like a, a chronological. Oh, was, uh, so the the first one that I watched, I believe, was uh, Back to the Future. Ah, uh, yes. For yes. some reason, I, I started on season two, even though I'd never watched any of it. Hmm. Uh, but I, I, I watched uh, Back to the Future first, and it was great to see a lot of information that I actually didn't know. It does... I, I, didn't, I don't really like the uh, the British guy talking during all the interviews, like... They're doing the interviews and then yeah, he kind of talks like a over VH1. It's I love the weird. '90s thing. Yeah, it is very weird. I, I don't care for that part of it, but it's still got I a mean, lot of really yeah. cool information. Once I got over like that, it it still does tell you a lot of information, and 
uh, like how everybody was like uh, doing on sets and like every how everybody's chemistry was because I also watched uh, Dirty Dancing and Jurassic Park and mm-hmm. a couple other ones. Like I've just been binging them like, nightly since Friday. And it is a great series. Yeah. So would thoroughly recommend my plug. The movies that made us on Netflix. Ooh, uh-huh. yes. Yeah. I'm just obsessed with Christmas. And I love the script. And I was like, I'm in. Having absolutely no idea what we were about to find out. I wrote Ghostbusters. The concept was kind of a brand new idea. I remember I read the script for Dirty Dancing. So the rough cut's done. He looks over at my bosses and says, burn the negative and collect the insurance. Oh, no. Why did we waste our money on this? <gasps> A lot of the actors read the script and they go, this guy's like a wimp. All the hero of this movie does is try to hide and get help. We'd run out of studios. 42 rejection letters. They were really afraid of a girl's movie. It's just so ridiculously violent. It's so scary to watch. They really do the stuff. We thought it was a pretty good movie, but we had no idea it was going to have the effect it did. So those are our plugs for this week. Uh, yeah, you can check those out online. Uh, that brings. I'm so lost at what part I'm at. That brings us to our assignment for next week. It is Glenjamin Button's turn mm-hmm. to pick our little little assignment. So, Glenn, yes, what will us and the kiddos be watching? Uh, I'm so glad you asked because there's a movie that's been sitting in my Amazon for a little bit here, mm-hmm. and uh, it's called Perfume: The Story of a Murderer. Ooh, I had is noticed this, uh, Ben Kingsley. Uh, it is Ben Wish Wishaw. Oh. Not Kingsley. Um, it, this is a movie that's been sitting in there for a while. I wanted to rewatch it. I've watched it years ago. I don't remember too much, but honestly, I do remember liking it a lot. And I mm-hmm. noticed that you hadn't seen it. I'm so not. this is the perfect opportunity for us to both watch it and collect Ooh. our minds together and see how we both felt about yes, it. Yes, interesting. Yes. So, I am curious if Ben Kingsley is in a similar movie because I could have sworn I saw his face on a similar poster. Uh, <sighs> I don't know. Uh, but Perfume, the story of a murderer. Came out in 2006. Jean-Baptiste Guendolele. That is not a real word, but I did my best, okay? Born with a superior I think it's olfactory sense, uh, creates the world's finest perfume. His work, however, takes a dark turn as he searches for the ultimate scent. Mm-hmm. Directed by uh, Tom Tykwer, uh, written by Andrew Birkin uh, for the screenplay. Also burned uh, Eichinger. Eichinger. Eichinger, yeah. Eichinger, and also Tom Tom Tykwer. Ty- Ty- <laughs> Do you smell burnt toast? <laughs> All right. Anyway, it stars Ben Winshaw, Dustin Hoffman, Alan Rickman. Uh, da, 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 da. Rachel you know, I Hardwood. might have been thinking of Alan Rickman and not not Ben Kingsley. Who knows? I mean, maybe you just got the names mixed up. Ben, maybe. Ben's in there, and then I don't Very know cool. where you got the last one, but it's close <laughs> enough. See, that that's going to be on Amazon Prime. Should be a fun time. Yes. century France, Jean-Baptiste Grenouille was born with a talent that made him unique among mankind. Stones, warm stones, water, frog. His phenomenal sense of smell was a gift that had been given to him and him alone. Master, can I come to work for you? My nose knows all the smells in the world. No man can call himself a perfumer unless he has proved his worth. The soul of beings is their scent. (laughs) The intoxicating power of the girl's smell made it clear to him that he must learn how to preserve scent so that never again would he lose such sublime beauty. I don't, I don't like perfume that much, but, you know, sometimes the scent is really powerful and wafting. But let's see what else is powerful and wafting, like people's performances in this movie. Who, yes. who, who knows? Yes, Tom Tyquer, uh was one of the directors for Cloud Atlas. Oh. Uh, so there's that, you know. Or did he just, he did the music for it. Did he direct it too? 
Stand by. Yeah, he directed. He, he directed yeah, he it with the Wachowskis. Uh, so yeah, Perfume is going to be our assignment for next week. You can check that out on Amazon Prime. Thank you everyone for listening. As always, you can check out our website at www.keystonefilmreview.com on Instagram Keystone underscore film underscore review, Twitter Keystone underscore film, Facebook Keystone film review, YouTube Keystone film review, TikTok Keystone film review, and on Letterbox, I am Mike KFR and I am Glenn KFR. And that will do it until next week when we smell real good, but might be wearing someone's blood. It could be possible. It could be possible. Who knows? I I haven't seen the movie. Goodbye. Goodbye.